litmus reacts to few substances. When we add litmus paper to the soap solution or shampoo solution or baking soda, all these are basic solutions, basis, basic in nature. They turn red color litmus paper into blue color. And we add these litmus strips or litmus solutions to aerated water, lemon and vinegar. These are acidic solutions which are acidic in nature. They contain acid in them. They turn blue color litmus paper to red color. This is how litmus act on these specific substances. And litmus is added to common salt, litmus solution or litmus paper, common salt, vinegar, water. When we are talking about vinegar, vinegar is acetic acid. When we mix with vinegar with water, it is completely diluted. So it is neither acidic nor basic now. So common salt, vinegar, water and sugar. These substances are mixed with litmus paper. They do not show any change in color. So these substances are known as neutral substances. They are neither acidic in nature nor basic in nature. Both acids and bases are present in equal proportion in them. So that is the reason they are known as neutral substances. Neither acidic nor basic and acidic and basic contents are equal in proportion. So this is a, these are known as the neutral substances. Now let's take some examples of acids. Whenever you get some honeybee sting, whenever honeybee bites you, you immediately get a burning sensation because honeybee releases acid into your skin. The skin of the mouth of the honeybee contains some acid. So acids give burning sensation to your skin. Not only is honeybee sting, any type of acid, chemical acids which you get in the laboratory, if you apply them to your hand, sometimes you get burning sensation. So acids give burning sensation to the skin. To the skin. Example, honeybee sting. Whenever honeybee bites you, you get a burning sensation because of the presence of acid released into your skin by the mouth of the honeybee. Some examples of the naturally occurring acids around us are tannic acid, which is available from the form of tea. Tartaric acid. The source of the tartaric acid is grapes. And one more source of the tartaric acid is tamarind, what we consume daily in our food. Then you have formic acid. Formic acid is released from the ants. Then you have citric acid. The source of citric acid is lemon and orange. Then you have oxalic acid which is present in spinach and tomato. You have acetic acid from the vinegar. You have malic acid from the apple. You have ascorbic acid from the gooseberry. It is a good source of vitamin C. Ascorbic acid also known as vitamin C. Then you have stearic acid present in the fats. So this is about acids. Taking examples of bases. Bases are nothing but oxides of the substances dissolved in water to form bases. The oxides of the substances dissolved in water to form bases. Taking the example of magnesium when dissolved in water gives rise to magnesium hydroxide MgOH. All the bases are always indicated by OH. If any chemical formula has OH in them, then it is called a basic substance. It is a base. Any chemical formula of any chemical compound, if it has OH in it, then it is a base and it is basic in nature. So oxides of the substances dissolved in water give rise to bases. So example, magnesium is dissolved in water gives rise to the magnesium hydroxide, MgOH. It is a base. Same way we have calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is nothing but lime water. Then you have ammonium hydroxide, you have potassium hydroxide, then shampoos, what you are available outside, all these are come under bases. Then nowadays we hear lots about acid rains. Sometimes we hear in the newspapers, we hear in the news, we read in the newspapers that acid rain has occurred. Mainly acid rains occur in Vishakapatnam of Andhra Pradesh. How do this acid rain occurs? Because the rain water mixes with the pollutants in the atmosphere and causes acid rains. So acid rains, in this acid rain, the gases from the atmosphere react with the moisture of the air to form acids. So the gases such as carbon dioxide, sulfur, nitrogen, all these react, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, these react with the moisture of the air and convert into acidic form. So carbon dioxide from the air reacts with the moisture to convert into carbonic acid. Sulfur dioxide reacts to form sulfuric acid. Then same way nitrogen dioxide reacts to form nitric acid. So these nitric acids mix with the rainwater and form rain, acid rain. So the, this acid rain sometimes damages the buildings, causes corrosion of the buildings. Then sometimes damages the plants, damages the animals. So acid rain is usually not a good indicator. It is the excessive use of, because of the air pollution, the acid rain occurs. So this is about acid rain. Now let's move to this neutral substances and how this neutralization reaction occurs. Moving on to the neutralization reaction. 
the substance which is neither acidic nor basic is known as neutral substance in which the acidic and basic proportions will be equal in quantity so we cannot say whether it is acidic or basic so it is neither acidic nor basic that is why it is known as a neutral substance so neutralization if you add excess base to any any acidic substance it will turn into a base so if you add any excess base to a acidic substance it turns base same way it is vice versa reverse also same way we can change any base to an acid by adding excess of same way we can change any base to an acid by as adding excess of the acid to it so effect of the base will be nullified by the acid so what do you mean by effect of the base is nullified null means zero nullified means the effect of the base will become zero by the effect of the acid suppose in a test tube there is base along with an indicator and if you keep on adding large amounts of acid the effect of the base will be destroyed and the solution will turn into acid that is what they means that means any substances can be turned from base to acid by adding excess of that substance any substances can be add changed from acid to base by adding excess of the acid to prove this experiment to prove this we have an experiment take a test tube add a solution of acid plus indicator here we are taking hydrochloric acid as an example and the indicator will be phenolphthalein indicator phenolphthalein is an indicator prepared by dissolving or dissolving in alcohol dissolving what phenolphthalein or alcohol so this is usually the indicator is colorless but when it add when base is added to this phenolphthalein it turns into deep in color deep pink in color phenolphthalein is an indicator prepared by dissolving in alcohol so usual color of the phenolphthalein is colorless but when the phenolphthalein is added to a basic solution it turns deep pink in color when phenolphthalein indicator is added to an acid it remains colorless so here we are taking an acid plus an indicator the acid is somewhat colored but the indicator is colorless so hydrochloric acid plus phenolphthalein we have taken the mixture of phenolphthalein plus hydrochloric acid is taken in a test tube here you are adding base to it the base is sodium hydroxide when the amount of base you have added keeps on increasing this solution will turn into a base so the solution of an acid and indicator when added with excess amount of base that is sodium hydroxide will convert into a base that means it will turn convert into deep pink in color this solution the colorless solution will turn into deep pink in color with the help of excessive adding of the base same way if you add excessive dilute hydrochloric acid to it again it will become colorless because of the excessive adding of the acid when you add excessive base to this acid plus indicator solution this will become deep pink in color due to the presence of the base but same way if you add excessive of hydrochloric acid to this solution again this base will convert into acid and become colorless so that is how this is proved that in neutralization reaction acids can be converted into bases and the bases can be converted into acids so this is how phenolphthalein example is given so acid plus base are mixed this is acid this is base and neutralize effect of both this has neutralized the effect of both and thereby the acidic and basic nature of both are destroyed that means both adding both acid and base has neutralized the effect of this solution and the acidic and basic nature of the substance are destroyed in this experiment in the acid plus base are mixed and neutralize the effect of both and then the acidic and basic nature both were destroyed so in this process some amount of heat will be involved so the neutralization reaction always evolves heat if you touch the test tube if you feel near the test tube you will feel heat then the heat which is evolved raises the temperature of the mixture so when you mix an acid with a base definitely the nature of both will be destroyed and will become neutral and release some kind of salt along with water and along with the salt and water it also releases some amount of heat so when you are adding an acid and a base the nature of both the substances is destroyed and the substance becomes a neutral substance thereby evolving some amount of heat along with this solution becomes a mixture of salt and water after mixing a base and a acid the solution becomes neutral and gives salt and water and also heat is evolved if you touch the test tube here you will feel the presence of heat so in a mixture of acid and base are mixed neutralize the effect of both and the acidic and basic nature were destroyed heat was evolved heat raises the temperature of the mixture and give rise to a new substance called salt so the neutralization reaction can be explained as acid plus base when mixed together it gives rise to salt and water and also heat so hydrochloric acid 
and sodium hydroxide when mixed in this test tube gave rise to the sodium chloride and water. Sodium chloride is known as the common salt what you eat. So the reaction between an acid and a base is known as the neutralization reaction. Salt and water are produced in this process and heat is evolved in this process. So this is about the neutralization reaction. It is simple. The neutral substances are neither acidic nor basic. When an acidic and a neutral when an acidic and a basic substance is mixed together, the effect is destroyed. That means substance become neutral in nature and salts are produced after an acid and base is mixed in equal proportions. Along with salt, some water is produced and heat is also involved. So this is how the neutralization reaction occurs. So we are taking the example of neutralization reactions in our daily life. In the neutralization reaction, an acid and a base reacts to form salts and give away water and again heat is evolved in this process so the salts which are given in the neutralization reaction those salts can be either acidic in nature or basic in nature or neutral in nature because an acid and a base are mixed together in equal proportions the nature of the acid and base both are destroyed and becomes a neutral solution when acid and bases are mixed in equal proportions the nature of them are destroyed and they give rise to salts those salts can be either acidic or basic or neutral in nature. So in neutralization reaction, salts will be produced along with that some heat will be evolved. So in taking the example of neutralization in everyday life, suppose if you eat sometimes spicy food or very oily food or a very masala rich food, then you sometimes you get indigestion. How do you feel the feeling of indigestion? There will be pain and burning in your stomach. In your stomach, definitely some acid content is present. That acid present in your stomach is hydrochloric acid. So, if there is excessive secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach, then it causes indigestion. It is indicated by pain and burning sensation. So, to relieve this indigestion, what do you do? If you take an antacid tablet like Digeen, Gelucil, Eno or something else. So, what are these antacids made up of? They are made up of milk of magnesium. So what is this milk of magnesium contains? Milk of magnesium is made up of magnesium hydroxide. Then you know magnesium hydroxide is a base. So to relieve the effect of the excessive hydrochloric acid in your stomach, you take acids in the form of bases. So these bases neutralize the effect of acids. So this is how it works in indigestion. Then moving on to ant bite. Whenever an ant bites you, you feel redness, you feel itching, you feel inflammation, pain. Then why like that? Because ant injects formic acid in your skin and the body of the ant contains an acid called formic, formic acid which causes burning sensation. When ant, when ant bites you, the formic acid will be injected into your skin thereby causing burning sensation. To relieve this burning sensation, what do you apply? A solution of baking soda or a calamine solution or a zinc carbonate solution. All these are bases, basic solution. So to neutralize the effect of this formic acid, baking soda is applied to neutralize the effect of acid in the ant bite. That is how it is neutralized. The acid is neutralized by the base in the form of baking soda solution. Then in soil, when the crops are grown in an agricultural field, to improve the yield of the crops, fertilizers are added. How fertilizers are added? So suppose the soil is defective of the soil has deficiency of urea, you add uric acid to it. Then excessive uric acid in the soil, what it causes? It decreases the soil fertility. Thereby the plants do not grow well. When soil is acidic, that means excessive uric acid is present. You have added urea because of the deficiency of nitrogen. If there is nitrogen deficiency in the soil, you add urea in the form of fertilizer. Urea is present in the form of uric acid. Thereby it increases the acidic content of the soil and makes the soil acidic. Thereby plants do not grow well when the soil is acidic. Then what happens? Bases are added to the soil like calcium hydroxide and calcium oxide. So these, if soil is basic, then what happens? Organic matter is added to the soil which makes the soil into acidic in nature. If the soil is too basic, organic matter is added. Organic matter is added in the form of cow urine, cow dung, then the cow urine also contains uric acid. In that way, the soil gets its use. In that way, the soil gets its gets its acidic content back. So, if there is excessive use of fertilizers, acidic content will be increased, which will be neutralized with the help of adding base in the form of calcium hydroxide or calcium oxide. Then, soil is too much basic. Organic matter will be added to make the soil more acidic. How the organic matter helps? Organic matter contains 
cow dung and cow urine. The cow dung and the cow urine contains urea in them. With the urea contains again uric acid in them. Thereby again acid will be added back into the soil. Then moving on to the factory waste. All the factory wastes are usually released into the water, water, water bodies like canals and rivers. The factory wastes are usually contain acid. Then what happens? The excessive acid in the water kills the fishes and other organisms. To neutralize this effect, basic substances will be added by the factory people into the water body so that the fish and other organisms are not damaged. So this is how neutralization occurs in our everyday life. So at the end of the lesson you have understood what is acid, what is base, you can define acid, you can give examples of acid and bases. You can you have understood what are neutral substances, you have understood what is neutralization reaction and you have understood the examples of neutralization in our daily life. So here we end the lesson.